Team Deathmatch. Let's do this. Hey everyone, Team Deathmatch here, and today I'm going to show you guys on how I set up my Hotbog HD PVR. And uh, this is the box the Hotbog HD PVR comes with. It's smaller than the its original box, and it's actually quite better looking. Uh, as you can see here, it has a guy, you know, playing PlayStation 3 game. This is because uh, the Hapak HD's PVRs, one of its main functions is to record gameplay, unlike a Dazzle or Easy Cap, which is just meant for VHS to DVD transfer. Uh, here are the system requirements requirements for the Hapak HD PVR. Uh, also, it says that you need to have uh, Windows for it to work, but uh, Macintosh uh, works just fine with the Hapog HD PVR and I recommend having a little bit more than 220 megabytes uh, of free hard disk space so you know you can record and uh, these are just like the technical specifications for it just like you know you can uh, pause the video just to read it I don't know if you'll be able to read it though the text might appear small and this is just what the package includes so in case you're missing anything you can just like you know check what it check what it comes with and this is like the bundled software I do not use any of these uh, I use another program which I'll show you in a moment. And this is just like a description of what you can do with your Hotbox HD PVR. This is even like a, a pretty cool diagram on how you can set up with a gaming console. I don't know what console is that supposed to be. Is that a Wii or an Xbox? Whatever. Uh, so you're, you have to use component cables if you want to get the best quality and if you want, you know, for it to lag less. And uh, I know it keeps saying PC here, but like I said, this time it's going to be, I'm going to show you guys on how to use it with a Mac. Oh, and this is just like a diagram explaining the inputs and outputs of the Hapog HD PVR. Now, uh, this is the capture this is the capture card itself. As you can see here, this is, this is a it's Hapog HD PVR, and this is the company's logo. This is a... This is like a transmitter, I don't use it that much. This is the power button for the Hapog, and uh, it'll light blue when it's working, and the Hapog must be powered in, uh, unfortunately, unlike other capture cards, which uh, get uh, their power from like a USB or something. This is like the regular AV inputs, I do not use these. And this is an S video input. Uh, I guess this part is, was meant for like you know VHS to DVD transfer because those kind of capture cards usually have these inputs onto them. The back is uh, what we're going to use. This is the component input. It records in 1080i, not 1080p. Uh, it's also capable of recording 720p and uh, 576p, which is component uh, cables when they're not set to high definition. Uh, 576p is also the quality you get from S video. And this is the output. It's this output is not a splitter. It's an amplifier, so it copies the let's say 1080i signal, but rather splitting the 1080i signal in half. It copies it and you know sends the same quality directly onto your TV. This is like uh, optical audio. I don't use that. This is an IR blaster. I don't use that. This is a USB input for the Pog. It's a regular USB peripheral input, so you can use any USB peripheral cable and it'll work I guess. This is the power input and like it says here use only the power supply that's provided. This is the USB cable that comes with the Havag HD PVR. This is like a special peripheral side and uh, pretty much like I said any USB peripheral cable will work with this and uh, this is not like a regular USB 2.0 slot that works with PC and Mac. Uh, this is the, um, sorry, this is the power source, and uh, this is the plug you need to place onto your Hapog. Uh, these are my console's regular component cables. You must have these. Uh, like, don't use HDMI uh, or anything. Even though HDMI does get better quality, uh, component still does a pretty good job. And uh, this is the double-sided component cable that came with my Hapog HD PVR, so I can run one side to my TV, and one side uh, will, will like, uh, uh, you know, go into my Hapog. That way I can preview on what is happening uh, on my TV, and, you know, a signal will go straight to my computer. Uh, for some reason, the version I have has black-colored uh, component cables, like the wire's black, while I've seen others who have, like, a a white uh, colored wire. 
Okay, so now let's uh, start setting it up. Oh, by the way, the sketch garden might look a little big, but trust me, it's lighter than you think. Okay, so first I'm going to take this set of component cables and I'm going to be plug them back uh, onto my TV. And you have to have an HD TV for this to work. Mine is a slightly old HD TV. It can support 1080i resolutions, but not full uh, 1080p. Uh, this is like a component input. input. Uh, I'm just going to like place it in. Green goes to green. Blue goes to blue. Red goes to red. These are actually pretty easy to put in and uh, put out. So you shouldn't have that much trouble handling them. Alright, just make sure they're placed in tightly. And like I said, make sure you have a full high definition TV. Uh, Standard definition TVs won't really work. I don't really know how how the Pog will handle with a uh, 3D TV. Although I suppose it'll handle just fine. Oh, sorry guys. I was, I was going into the wrong side. This is supposed to go into the output section. These rods are packed a little tight together, so like, you know, it might be a little jammed. And uh, now I'm just going to plug in my console's uh, component cables onto them. Oh, I do not use this uh, yellow input cable side. This is going to be like, uh, sorry you guys can't see, I'm just going to like stop the video. But you guys get the idea, I'm going to be plugging my component console's component cables onto the input section. Okay, so like I have my component cables going into my APOG, this double-sided component wire going to the, in the output section and going way all into my TV. And what's important is that you make sure that the signal that's going into your TV is clean, that way you'll know whether or not the APOG is working perfectly or not. Now I'm just gonna plug in the power source. Uh, I've actually been like a little bit conservative of the power that's going around in my house because like, you know, I don't want to cause an electrical surge and I have to have like, you know, a lot of things turned on if I want to be able to play my, on my Xbox. Okay, I'm just gonna put this to the back. Alright. Now when I turn it on, as you can see here, there, there's a blue uh, light coming in. Alright, now I'm just gonna turn on my console. Alright, let's turn on my TV. Alright, sorry, my TV just takes a while to fire up. Alright, now as you can see, there is a clean picture. I'm just gonna, like, you know, uh, wait for the menu to, like, just see what's happening. Okay, just uh, hold on a sec. Okay, uh, in the meantime, let's just plug in the USB cable. Oh wait, hold on. The the sig yes, the signal does look pretty good. It looks just like 1080i, as if like I haven't actually you know plugged in my uh, HAPOG in, in the first place. Okay, so now let's take this side in. This is a regular USB 2.0 slot. I'm gonna put it on my Mac. And Josh. <laughs> and uh, this is my MacBook Pro, 13 inch, or lower end. Now, as we know, Apple is on crack while deciding the hardware for their computers, but hey, they make good software, so like, I only have two USB ports, so like, that's going to be like, make sure you have one open, and uh, a two-button mouse isn't really necessary for operating the HAPOG. Okay, now I'm going to show you guys the recording phase of using the HAPOG HD PVR with the Mac, okay? So now I do not use the software that comes with Windows, obviously. I use this program called ITV, which is actually said to run the, the HAPOG HD PVR better than the Windows software. Okay, now uh, this is the preview screen of my uh, HAPOG HD PVR, uh, but however, there's one uh, big disadvantage to it. There's actually a one to two second delay from what is happening on the TV to what is happening uh, on the preview screen. So like, uh, let's say I'm going to move in the menu. Uh, like it just moved like two seconds after I pressed uh, you know right bumper to make the m menu move across uh, but like it's not nothing too serious but like I recommend you probably guys uh, just like you know mute the volume a bit so like uh, the echoed noise won't get into your way 
and uh, what's actually pretty cool about this is that I can actually use uh, ITV to go back in time so like as you can see and it still continues to record further uh, but I don't really like to go uh, back in time through my recording uh, too much it probably messes everything up uh, I can even like you know take a snapshot with it which, which you can't really do on the Windows version yet you're probably gonna hear a noise uh, once you take the snapshot uh, this is uh, it actually uh, you can just probably you know add an iPhoto later I, I don't really know on well like you know taking uh, a picture on ITV is gonna probably be a little bit difficult uh, I don't really do it I'm just pointing it out for fun okay uh, so um, this you know this is like pause uh, this goes like uh, back forward and this is the record button, I'm just gonna hit record just uh, move around the menu a bit uh, like that now I'm gonna hit stop recording and uh, I'm just, before I show you on where to get the recordings I'm just gonna run you guys through the I'm, I'm gonna show you guys my, my preferences uh, I kept, keep my hotbox at a custom bitrate and I keep it at 11 megabits per second and my audio standard is AAC uh, the only other thing I need to show you guys is, uh, hold on, uh, it was here somewhere, uh, display, yes, keep it at a progressive scan for both, and keep it at normal full screen, and keep it at an over scan, and, uh, I'm just gonna run you guys through the ITV setup assistance, uh, just hit next, uh, United States, uh, make sure you select a pog and make sure you select uh, HD PVR next uh, this is my name uh, activation key uh, just like copy that I'm pretty sure it'll be you know enough and you'll get you know the ITV software rather than paying seventy dollars for it um, this is a uh, component uh, input and RCA analog rear and uh, I don't enable the ring light it's annoying for me and I don't turn on audio boost uh, when you're using ITV audio will somehow come out louder than it should be uh, keep that NTSC next and uh, now you just like you know pretty much connected to a USB 2.0 cable next uh, ignore this uh, just click next and congratulations and now uh, this should pretty much come up the way it is if you want to access your recordings, you go to File, uh, New Playlist, and uh, this is just like the video I recorded. Come, it saves the video in its uh, own format for some reason, uh, and this format is not compatible with uh, iMovie, so you have to like convert it. I convert uh, my game gameplay clips directly onto iMovie. You go to just File and you go to Export. And uh, I save it as iMovie 09, uh, just change the name. Actually, I save all my recordings onto an external hard drive, and it should boot up here in a second. Uh, just hold on. It usually takes a while. My external hard drive is a 500 gigabyte uh, My Passport for Mac. I save it to iMovie Projects Gameplay, just name it. Uh, I've already, I'm already done exporting it. Uh, I usually just like delete my ITV clips, like I, I have no use for them really after I'm done exporting them to uh, iMovie, although like uh, I like to keep them in here just in case uh, I need a backup, but I only delete them once the video hasn't successfully been uploaded to YouTube. So now it's, uh, let's X this. Okay, um, now uh, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna edit the clip onto iMovie. I'm just gonna disconnect my hipoc. Okay, so uh, I'm just gonna open up iMovie. Hold on, uh, iMovie. I recommend like you guys have like uh, pretty much uh, four gigabytes of RAM and at least an Intel Core i5 uh, for iMovie because you know it's a bit of a greedy software. Okay, uh, now I'm gonna walk you through me recording this clip. I'm just gonna you know if there are loading screens when you're playing you know online, best delete them. Uh, try to short in the clip as much as possible but also leave some space for you know uh, uh, voiceovers and things like that uh, also for some reason the clips seem to be in half I just uh, make sure you join the clip so it's easier to edit I'm just gonna make sure 
All the clips are joined at once. Okay, they are. Now, uh, even though this is a uh, 720p, yeah, like uh, actually, uh, my the recording you just saw was done in 1080i, but uh, I just like set the bitrate, so it's just pretty much looks like similar to best uh, 720p quality. Uh, I do that, you know, just for like uh, a hard drive space and things like that. Now, uh, I increased the brightness to three, but I increased the saturation to like uh, around uh, 128. You want like some color to show up. Uh, here's like what it is uh, before and after. Uh, the reason why I increased the brightness is just, you know, because like I don't want everything to be overcrowded in color, but like adding brightness usually like uh, lowers the quality of the video. Uh, now I'm just gonna hit audio. And uh, I like to decrease the audium of the gameplay to 70. Oh yeah, and the reason why I increase the saturation is just because, like, you know, YouTube uh, lowers the quality and uh, a bit. So like, you know, pretty much this will look like the same way uh, as it does when I'm j when I just like uh, recorded the clip. Okay, and I'm gonna hit done. And uh, then uh, I, this is how I record a voiceover. I don't use a actual microphone. Uh, I think all MacBooks and uh, iMacs uh, have a built-in microphone uh, with them. Uh, if you're using a Mac Mini, you might need to buy an external. Uh, I don't really know. Uh, as much as I want to buy a Mac Mini, uh, I don't really have one. I keep the input volume at 63%, and uh, I put a small voice enhancement only, just it improves the quality, but I set the noise reduction to 20 decibels. Uh, I've noticed in my earlier videos that my voice came out uh, loud. So uh, you just click on this uh, icon here and you give your old voiceover. And uh, as you know, I have my own uh, signature, uh, what's it again? Oh yeah, introduction, it's somewhere here. Uh, so non sec. Okay, sorry. Now I just uh, drag this. Okay, uh, now I'm pretty much uh, done recording. Uh, and editing uh, my video, like although I'd uh, I'd add the voiceover for the final, uh, but uh, I this is how I export it. I c c select export uh, movie and I export it to 720p, uh, and then I use uh, Google Chrome to upload my videos because uh, Google Chrome uploads videos faster than a direct upload from my movie and faster upload than Safari. And in the event that your Mac is disconnected from the internet, like the it will pause, it will not like you know stop. So uh, this is just showing you guys on how I set up my Hubbog HTTP bar. I'll remember to put the ITV serial number so you guys can get it for free. And uh, well, if you have uh, any other any problems, just uh, leave a comment. I'll make sure I'll, I can get to every one of you guys. All right, see you guys.